Hello everyone. Today I would like to share a topic that is uh, getting started with the back of TwinKai 3, uh, TwinKai 3 PLC project. I'm working in industry area. For me, I'm still a new starter in back of technology area. And recently, because I'm going to do a project, that project will use a back of a PLC system. So I has been used a couple of weeks to learn this back off. And so in this video, I will show some key information what I got. And basically this whole process, that is my learning curve and my learning process. And maybe if you're new starter in this back off technology area, hopefully those information could help you. Talking about this uh, back off system, in industry area, if we talk about PC based automation, maybe the first name at your top of your head that is a back off system and maybe the second one would be a siemens system pc based uh, it's called vnc now it's called a i7 1500s system um in pc based automation system a back off is very famous but for the new learner usually they will have a trouble for learning the back off system i will explain why that happens if you are a new learner, when you try to start a new system, maybe the best way is we go to Google and search the company name and go to their website, search if there are some videos, materials, documents, manuals, getting started manual to learn that. So if you type in 3w.bikeoff.com, so this is the first view of the main screen of the Backoff website. And if you are a new learner in this area, maybe the first things you could go to the training or the product finder. So let's go to the product finder. So from here, we can see that some catalog here. So IPC, industry PC, IO, motion or automation. Maybe if you are industry automation technicians or industry automation programmer, so maybe you would go to here, automation. And from here, you will say, search, search this. Honestly, this is a very trouble for me at the first time because in back of a technical area, they always call TE, TC, TF, something like this. What does it mean for TE? If we try to click the TC3 engineer, they will pop up this number. If you're a new starter, I do believe those numbers will create a trouble for you. You do not know which way I should go which folder I should go deeply, especially for the new starter, right? So next things you would go to the training catalog and there's a list here. Those names make sense. Maybe you would want to go to basic PLC training or some internet of things training. So you would click the in and look at the detail. But however, it shows a training location that is in Germany. Um, or you might contact the local support that usually on-site training would cost you a lot. But for you, the personally or for the new starter, you want to search some information and get a basic idea of this system or download the software you want to try yourself. So this video will mainly show this. So let's start from the PLC. So if we go to the automation and go to TwinCAD 3 and go to the job list, TC3 engineering and go to TC3 engineering and go to download software, TC31 full setup 3.1 4024.4 that is the exact software if you want to program a PC based PLC and the PLC HMI in backup system. So you can imagine if this is the first time how you can find this folder, right? So that is a little bit a different style of the backup. If you know Omron, Siemens or Alan Brownlee, usually in their website they will have a catalog showing like 
uh, middle level control system, high level control system, or machine based control system, or compact system, something like that. Uh, you can base on your application. For example, if you are a machine builder, uh, what the size of your machine is a, one just one cell or a whole production line. Basically, you can use the size of your machine and try to find what kind of a controller suitable for you. But however, the back of system, they use the, the catalog organized like this way. They are product oriented. But for the new starter, how can you know what does it mean for your TE, those things? This is really a trouble for the new starter. So I think that because uh, we can see that so a lot of a backup system actually be now just sold by a product because a lot of backup system the originally most of the backup system they come from the import machine for example the extruder or some uh, rubber machine or some German machine when they shipped it or import in your country and those machine their control system they are back off so people learn the back off system not because from the pure product they learn from this machine and from this machine they learn that it's a back off pc based system so because at that time you already know what kind of a pc based controller this machine is using so you can search the name and try find here find and uh, try to find search from their website you can search what kind of software for that but however if you're a new learner and you have a totally scratch you started from totally scratch that will be a little bit trouble so if you try to learn the pc based plc you need to download te1000 tc3 this version 4020.4 and it, it can be downloaded for free, but you need to uh, log in. You need to create an account and log in for that. And keep in mind, in backup system, if we talk about the HMI, there are two kinds of HMI. One HMI, it called it a PLC HMI. That means basically those HMI is working together in a PC-based PLC. So their function is a little bit simple. Basically, the price is really good price because uh, they are not using some additional hardware resources. Uh, this PLC HMI is working together with a PLC logic. This HMI style is basically like a Lego. So a lot of things you need to build up by yourself. And another style that called uh, uh, HMI engineering so this HMI is based on the C++ and the Donut. It's really high on the one tag. And, but for the new starter, maybe it's a little bit hard for you to start. Um, if you're a new learner, maybe you could start from the PLC and the PLC HMI. Start from here. So after you download this TC33, this software, take care here. So before you start, right click and select the run as an administrator. You should run as an administrator to install that. Don't forget this. And during the installation, there is one checkbox showing that do you want to install the Virtual Studio shell? You could select that. And after the installation, so it will use a basically maybe 10 or 20 minutes based on the performance of the laptop. And after you install the software on your desktop, it will show an icon like this. Or you go to your start and try to find a twin kite. Or so after you install that software, it will show you go to the start and search backup. Under this backup folder, you will find a couple of softwares that's already they are already installed. So personally, I would suggest that you grab the Project Compare XAE and XAE shell on your desktop. And if you only use the one latest version, uh, usually you just need to click this TwinCat XAE shell here.
So let's start. So before you click, keep in mind every time when you open up this software, highly recommend you run as a administrator. Okay, from here we can see the current build version that is a 4024.4. Um, the reason why I mentioned this because this version currently that is the latest version, but maybe some existing machine uh, in their program uh, they are still using some lower version. For example, uh, most of machine they are using 4022 or 4020 versions uh, in their machine. So it will be a couple different versions uh, in the market. But if you're a new learner, uh, this always latest program that is highly recommended. So if you start as a, an administrator, it will show us like this. So let's start to create a new project. So new and new and project. So from here, it pop up like this. So let's select the product or select the PLC project. So I will use uh, the browse, uh, allocate a new location. And we can call that Trinket PLC. Let's call A1. All right. So we select the Twinkit PLC project. Click OK. After you create a PLC project, that time is just to create a shell or just to create a structure. So to create an actual PLC, so the software will pop up which way you would like to select. One way is a standard PLC project, one way is an empty PLC project. Always, uh, for me, I always select a standard PLC, it will create a structure for you. So from here, keep in mind this name, I will choose a, another name. For example, let's say uh, cell controller. Add. So creating this uh, PLC project might take a couple seconds. After this PLC project created, so we can see this is a project uh, folder. This is a project, uh, we, I always call this a structure name. And this is your actual PLC name, cell controller here. And under here, there's a couple folders. It's a little bit confused, but when you see the main, uh, if you used uh, some PLCs before, it will be very familiar with that. If your main, uh, main is your program or main organizer, uh, and from this main, it will call other programs. Let me quickly set up a tag and uh, do a simple logic here. So for example, let's create a, uh, so if you want to create a new tag, you need to go to the global variable list. From here, we select add and select a create a global variable list. So for example, I will call this uh, cell. Create a folder named a cell. And in the cell, so this is a room you can create a tag here. If the first time you create this, honestly, this will be a little bit confused or what the syntax I can input, right? So maybe the best way I would prefer to use this table list first because this is a similar style when you're using other brands like a Siemens or Alan Bradley or Omron, Sysmax Studio. So let's create a name, create a... So shows, uh, let's say, <clears throat> data one. Data one, data two. 
Uh, let's select this is an integer. And also, I will create a two bits. So, feedback one. So I create a two tags here, uh, two bool tags here, uh, sensor feedback one and sensor feedback two. And uh, data one, that is the integer data, data two, that is the integer data. And also I could create a, let's say, um, this is a wild bank. At home. At work, this could be used uh, an internal tag here. So after we create a tag in this list, this might be a similar style as you create a tags before. And if you shift it to a textual wheel, this is the actual typical style in the back of or in this Twinkai software. All your tag, their similar style is like a C language. So after we create this, when we shift back to our main, we can call, we can add from here, we can add a, a POU here. We could call another uh, function or function block or program. So for example, I create a program. So let's say this is a valve control. And from here, that is um, the main language you would like to select. So because we, most of people already know the lighter logic, uh, I will use another video shows a lighter logic program. But in here, I will leave the default structure tags here. And let's see the structure tags uh, with the basic style for that. And so make sure we are in the wall bound control and I will I will basically transfer those information. For example, here, the sensor feedback one, I will transfer the feedback one to at work. So uh, the basic idea is I'm going to transfer this tag to this tag, they are all bool. But however, we can see he it shows a right line here. That because all those tag, all those tags, they are under the cell this folder. So the full name of the tag we need to come together with this folder name here. So that means your tag need to come up with uh, this style name. So we can imagine when you create a tag name, other than some tag name must make sense. Also, you can use a different folder to organize your cell. For example, uh, maybe your cell have a couple segment. Uh, some cell is called OP uh, or called a segment. Segment one, two, three, four, uh, input, uh, conveyor, output conveyor, uh, cell one, two, three. So you could set up a different folders here and use a different folder to organize uh, your wall bank or organize your devices. And this is a bool transfer. Also, we can try a data transfer. Uh, a cell dot data two, we transfer data one to data two. This is a format of a transfer. So this logic means uh, we transfer a bool from this feedback one to at work sync attack. And this is uh, we transfer a data one to a data two. 
data. And all those two logics are under a wild bank control. So the PLC start run and start to call this program. Don't forget. So our logic is here. So in your main, you need to call this. Call is very simple. So basically, under the main, you just need to type in this. It's a typical C language style. You call this wild bank here. Also, you could type in call here program for wild control. Write some comments here. And after this, we could compile. See, we could compile and see if it come up some errors or warnings. And we can see after it's compiled, uh, the system will create a instant here. So the system shows no error. But however, it's not finished yet. To run a basic program, this is the main and this is the, the sub program. And we use main to call this sub program. But what kind of hardware can run this main? From PLC wheel, where we can set up the hardware, right? So because if we expand the folder and the only things we can see that is only the logic portion. And this folder named the issues, that is the, we, uh, I explained that is the PLC HMI folder, especially for the PLC HMI screens. And where we can set up the hardware, where we can assign the IO to our internal tag. So unfortunately, I can tell you the current project, we cannot do that because when we set up the project, that is the, the PLC project, we didn't set up the solution structure. So the reason why I'm showing this is kind of like a, a little bit misleading. Um, but the reason why I'm showing this is because most of the new starter, when they learn these things, especially they come up from some PLC background. When you use this uh, twin tide to try to set up a PLC project, 90% you will select a PLC project and go my way like this. But after a setup, where we can run this project? From now, keep in mind, we just set up a PLC project. So we need to set up another shell, that another shell running kind of like a structure and that structure has the hardware, everything there. So turn to set up the shell. So firstly, we need to identify where is this, uh, where is this PLC project. Right click of your project and click this open folder in File Explorer to identify where is the file, where is your project located. So from here, we can see uh, this is a, that PLC project folder, and this is that PLC project A1 we set up, right? Okay. So from here, we can close everything. And we set up a new project. So this time, we set up a Trinkite project here. Trinkite XAE project. And this is the Trinkite project A1. Create a new solution. OK, we click the OK. And we select the same folder, EAH folder. And it will ask you if you need to close this. Yes, we close the existing one and shift this new project. So after this project folder created, you will see this screen will show us a little bit different. 
It shows system motion PLC safety. It's kind of like this project is a real shell. It's a real structure. And under this structure, it comes with uh, everything. It includes everything. Uh, so in industry, we usually use the PLC, safety controller, motion system, and IOS. This is the actual project folder. And if we shift back to the folder, we see this is the, the previous one we create a PLC folder, and this is a, the project folder, right? So the currently we are opening this project folder here. And to make it better to organize, personally, I will prefer to drag this folder under here. So make your PLC folders under your project umbrella here. And so when we select the PLC from here, usually we could select add new items. And from here, we can see this is the exact same way when we create a PLC project. But because we already create a PLC project, or if you have a PLC project in hand, you want to open an existing one. So you could right click, add an existing item. And from here, we go to select the PLC project we created. So because I dragged this PLC project under our project folder. So from here, we can double click and try to find uh, what kind of controller we can select. We select this PLC project and click the open. And he will ask you the source project path now belong the current solution. So we will select a copy. And after we moved, so we see that this is a PLC project we created. So that is called a cell controller. And that is the cell tag here. And this is the, the program we created. They are shown here. And when we go review the project folder, the actual folder, so we see that this is a project. And this is a we copied. And the actual under this PLC folder, so when we go detail, this is the actual PLC folder it has. This is the actual PLC folder in this project it has. This folder is our original one. So if we go to here, so we see some settings are still there. For example, this is a, the, um, for example, maybe this is a one project, a PLC project you copied from others, try to use as a review or reference project. And once you add an existing project and select the move or select the copy, so it will copy this project under your actual project. This is the, the PLC for controller. All the programs are here, so we can see that. Okay, let's go continue. So that time we talk about, so this is just a program main. So what kind of hardware will call or will run this main program? So we must set something, kind of like a hardware settings. In PLC world, uh, we usually need to set something here. So in this backup system, to run this main, we need a cyclic task to run this main. Uh, this usually is a similar way in the PLC world. For example, in Siemens world, they call it OB1. By default, OB1 will run as a cyclic uh, organization block. And in Alan Bradley, they call the main there. The main, by default, it will just cyclic run. So if we go to the task, it already set up a default PLC task there. So if we double click, we can see that this task, the cycle ticks. This means if we change this value, we can see this value change. So by default, that means every 10 milliseconds, it, this task will run one cycle. This is a similar idea as a R2 system, real-time operation system word. They call it a cyclic time. 
So with this setting, that means every 10 milliseconds, this PLC task, this task will run one time. And under here, we can see with this default setting, the PLC task, this task with the 10 milliseconds cyclic time, it will automatically call the main. It will automatically call this main. So this main is the same main as here. And once the system starts to run, that means this main will be run every 10 milliseconds. And this main will call a different program with this code structure. This is the basic idea of this controller. So in next video, I will show some key settings, especially in real time. And especially we can see in this system, this is a virtual machine system. And uh, by default, uh, this software will tell you virtual machine cannot run, cannot simulate this PLC system because there must be some settings in this project. I will show how to do that. See you in next video. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe. See you in next video.